I love how much I love her. Thank myself, I've had uh, <coughs> listened to her, whether in person, which is very rare, uh, but on uh, the screen, I've always found great benefit, and there are many things that uh, I myself uh, wait to hear at her feet, so once again, I welcome uh, Sri Mataji, Yumala Devi, who will talk, I think, as you will I don't want to crowd it down to, uh, to, to limit it rather down to, to, to an hour, but people may have to go to class. <coughs> so. I bow to all the seekers of truth. At the very outset, <coughs> we'll have to know one thing, that truth is what it is. We cannot organize it, <coughs> we cannot conceptualize it. Moreover, unfortunately, <coughs> we cannot know it at human awareness. I'm very thankful to you, sir, for inviting me to speak to young academic people here about, as you wrote to me, that we'd like to know about every type of religion. <coughs> At the very outset, I have to say that all religions were created by incarnations, prophets, were like flowers on one tree of life. When people plucked it, took away the dead flowers with them, then they started calling, this is mine, this is mine, this is mine. <coughs> and that's why you do not see how they are integrated and how they are absolutely from the one tree of spirituality. But one thing <coughs> is common to all of them is said that you have to know yourself, know thyself. Also it is called, <coughs> as in the Buddhist tradition or say the Christian tradition, that you are to be born again, even Hindu tradition. You are to be born again. <coughs> Especially in India, the word used for a person who is a realized soul 
who knows this all-pervading power is called as Dvijaha, means twice born. And also a bird is called as Dvijaha, means it, it is first in the form of an egg and then it becomes a bird in its one lifetime. In the same way, <coughs> a Dvija, the one who is a self-realized person, is first born as a closed personality, later on becomes a personality which is one with the all-pervading Divine Power. <coughs> now whatever I am telling you here, you are after all students and teachers and professors, academic people, you have to take it as a scientist would look at it with an open mind. And if it proves all right, then you have to accept it as honest people. Because you are very important people. I should say you are cream of the nation. And if you understand this as a hypothesis and later on find out whether it is true or not, then it is going to help in a much wider way than anything else. <coughs> now the principle of getting Realization or getting the second birth is not yet very well described into full text in these scriptures because I think the people were not ready. But in the Indian scriptures, in Sanskrit language, <coughs> there are 108 Upanishadas which have talked about the Brahma Vidya, meaning the knowledge of the all-pervading power. Of course, everywhere it is said that there is an all-pervading power of Divine Tao. But nobody has even described that. And also they have talked of the Holy Ghost, but nobody has described that either. Now, <coughs> how we proceed with this research is this way. That first of all, whatever I'm telling you, you have to see if it works in you or not. Sahaja means spontaneous, Saha means with, Ja means born. Yoga means the union with the Divine Power. This is a spontaneous happening because it is the last breakthrough of our evolution. We have become human beings and there is still a little journey we have to do for this last breakthrough where we get absolute knowledge and absolute truth. Because <coughs> We are in darkness and in ignorance about it. That's why there are so many problems. That's why we are suffering. That's why we do not know how to relate to each other in a truthful manner. First of all, we have to discover the truth. And the truth is that you are the Spirit. You are not this body, this mind, this ego, these conditionings, no. You are the pure Spirit. You have to achieve that state. You have to achieve, again I say, actualization. It's the becoming, it's not just certificate that I am the Spirit. It's not that. You have to become. So, <coughs> that is the one great fundamental truth about us, that we are all are the pure Spirit which we have to become. And the second one is that there is this all-pervading power around us which does all living work, including our evolution. For example, if you see these flowers here, beautiful flowers, and, and you see them, you never even think that they have come out of one seed which was just sprouted by the Mother Earth. You take them for granted. All living work you take for granted. You take your body for granted. Your eyes, which are wonderful cameras, I think your mind is wonderful computer. 
or you take it for granted. But how it was made, who made it, we never go into the inquiry of it because it's a living process. In the same way, we did not know how, with what force, we became human beings. Now within us lies this force which will take us to this last journey, to this last breakthrough. <coughs> and that is here shown in the triangular bone, which is called sacrum. It's interesting to note that the Greeks knew that it was a sacred bone. That's why they called it a sacrum and they called the fontanel bone as fontanel, meaning there's a fountain. That means they knew about the realization. Also, Athena word, Atha in Sanskrit means, also in their language, means primordial. So she is the primordial mother. They accept that there was a primordial mother. But in some religions, they have avoided the talk of the primordial mother. They said the father, the son, and no talk of the mother. Might be because of some reasons, but how can you have a father and a son and not the mother? So the feminine <coughs> energy, which is reflected within us, is this Kundalini. It's called Kundalini because it is coiled up. Kundal means a coil. I'm sorry, you all can't see it. No? Can you bring it? Somebody should hold it, that's all. Okay. Here, you can keep it. Here. Would be better. Now, what? this is the one, <coughs> coiled up in three and a half coils. That's a mathematical thing, which you will know later on, but it is here. And now there are seven centers, as you see, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven centers. All together, <coughs> one below the sacrum and the rest of them are above the sacrum. This one is in the brain on the optic chiasma and this one is the limbic area. Actually, this one is here and this is the limbic area which is the last seventh center. These are subtle centers and they look after our plexuses on the physical side. <coughs> but they also are responsible for our mental physical, emotional and spiritual being. So what happens that when we start using these centers, on the left and the right, now the left one, this one, the left one, is the energy of your desire, which Freud has called as psyche or things, but it's much more than that. So this is the power of your desire, and all your subconscious mind is placed on this side. And this is the power of action which is looking after your all actions and this is also nourishing your physical and mental being. This looks after your emotional being. So all your futuristic ideas are on that side, or we can say the supraconscious and the collective subconscious on that side. Jung got his realization, no doubt, and he said that when you get your realization, you have to have collective consciousness, a new awareness. That really happens in Sahaja Yoga because he got it also. But I think he made a mistake <coughs> when he placed the subconscious and the unconscious and all that in horizontal lines. Because after all, the Creator is a very great planner also. You have seen the periodic laws in the chemical chemistry, how beautifully He has planned out everything. There has to be some brain behind it. So how will He place it one after another like this horizontal? If you have to ascend, what He has done is to put them vertically, both of these, is the future on that side and the past on this side and the present here. In the medical uh, terminology we can say that this looks after the right sympathetic, this looks after the left sympathetic and this is the parasympathetic nervous system. 
that is when we uh, <coughs> put in some effort for some emergency. Supposing you have to run, then you use your sympathetic nervous system on this side. Or if you are crying and you are feeling very depressed and all that, then you are using the left sympathetic. You can use it. But when you are running, the heart pulsates very fast. But how does it come to normal is only through the parasympathetic activity which brings it to normal. <coughs> Doctors have not reached up to parasympathetic, they are very honest about it. These are the centers which are formed like this, left and right, see. This is how the centers were, left and right. So two centers make one center. Now supposing you start using this center too much, then it starts getting exhausted and smaller and smaller. But sometimes something can, something can happen, it will just break. And when it breaks, then what happens? You de develop diseases of a psychosomatic nature, which are incurable. But this Kundalini, when she rises, she pierces through all of them and binds them together, nourishes them and ultimately connects you to the all-pervading power. As this is connected to the mains, that's why we can use it, otherwise it is useless. So we all have to be connected to the mains. Then you will understand the integration of all the religions, of all the incarnation. All these days we had political problems, of course we have economic also, but I think we are threatened with <coughs> one big problem is fundamentalism or fanaticism. <clears throat> this comes because of our ignorance and that is why you have to have a complete realization of yourself and in the light of your spirit you can see very clearly that all these religions are, these are the milestones of our evolution and all these great people appeared on these centers, they created these centers to propound a religion. <coughs> At the beginning, every religion was just the same. Like in a Christian religion, Thomas, who was traveling from, in, uh, from uh, Egypt to India, has left some treaties written in a jar, which were discovered about 48, 50 years back and have been now decoded. And it's all they are talking about this experience of Sahaja Yoga, and about vibrations and all. There's a very nice book on that called as Gnostics. Now they were called as Gnostics, the people who were realized so. So Gna, Gna words comes from Sanskrit, Gna, Gna means the knowledge. Now the idea of knowledge we think is mental, is a mental feat, it is not. If knowledge was mental, then there would have been no problem because everybody thinks up differently. Everyone thinks, they are so self-opinionated, everyone thinks our religion is the best. I mean, you ask anyone, you ask a Jew, he'll say, all others are not chosen one, we are going to go heaven. Everybody believes like that. You ask Muslims, they'll say the same, Hindus will say the same, Christians will say the same. But all of them are quite capable of committing any sin they want to. We should face the reality as it is. Why, if they profess a religion, why should they not practicing it compulsorily, but because they are professing it from your mind, it's not working out in their being. To work it out in their being, they have to have connection with this all-pervading power which gives them the pure knowledge and a personality which we can call as the universal personality. Because spirit is the universal being within us, in our heart, is the reflection of the God Almighty. And this spirit, when it comes into our attention, it becomes such a light within us that the light of the attention itself acts. For example, any such person who has evolved to that state can just put attention to something and can work out wonders. Even a glance of such a person can be very purifying. But that you have to develop after you have 
established your relations with this all-pervading power. It is remarkable how, <coughs> after coming to Sahaja Yoga, the first time I met seven hippies in England. They were all professors like you. And, <laughs> and, and they were uh, uh, lawyers and doctors, and I mean, very capable people, all of them, seven of them. Two were French, two, two French ladies. And <coughs> I asked them, why are you taking all these things? He said, no, no, we, this is all in seeking, we are doing it. They are quite convinced about their own achievements. But once they got their Realization, overnight they gave up all their drugs about which they were on my head, that drug is very important. Overnight they wouldn't take it. Now, what happened actually? That <coughs> I give a simile always which is very simple to understand, that if you have a snake in your hand, it's all darkness, you cannot see it and you are very obstinate. Somebody tells you it's a snake, they say, no, it's a rope and it's not a snake. Till the snake bites you, you're not going to leave it. So, when the light comes in, even a little bit, you see the snake, you just drop it. In the same way it has happened with these people. And as I know, I will always say that they are very hard nuts to crack, these English are. But once they are cracked, they are tremendous people. Then they went into all their scholarships, found everything about Kundalini, everything, and today they are one of the foundations of Sahaja Yoga. So, <coughs> I have to tell you that this power is your own. She's actually your mother, individual mother, and she has got everything recorded about you within herself. And she is your own energy. She has to just rise and get you connected with this all-pervading power, then you realize how great you are. Just now <coughs> we feel so frustrated about ourselves. We don't know what is the purpose of our life, why are we here. I mean, I meet young people who are really very frustrated and they do all kinds of things out of frustration. But there is nothing to frustrate because once you get this realization, gradually you start feeling your divinity within yourself, your greatness within yourself. But the immediate effect is that you start feeling a cool breeze in your, on your fingertips, start feeling cool breeze blowing out of your head. And when you want to use this power, you are amazed to find out how tremendously powerful person you are. You can give realizations to people, you can raise their Kundalini. No saint so far did that, I must tell you. Nobody could do because the time was not such. Today the time is very special when this all-pervading power has become extremely dynamic. We call it now Kali Yuga is in parallel growing with Krita Yuga, means where it is working out. Where it is working out and when it starts working, this Krita Yuga is so effective and so dynamic that I have seen thousands get Realization. First time <coughs> when I went to Russia, they had never seen me, they don't know anything about me, nothing. They just saw my photograph. I must say this one thing about Russians, they are very introspective people, extremely introspective. Anything they want to do, even if they have to do a hairdo, they'll think, why should I do, what is the need? Anything they do it, they introspect it. What is the need to do this? Even if they fall in love, they first of all see and then fall, whether she should, they should fall or not. So they are extremely introspective by nature. <laughs> and their style of life, you can see from the way Tolstoy has written and other books like Crime and Punishment throughout, they are extremely introspective. Even the, even the hero and heroines of their pictures, if you see the films, they too are extremely introspective. It's a 
different type of uh, uh, category, I think, of their uh, personality, that they always introspect. But they saw my photograph just with my photograph, and not even photograph, it's a posters. You won't believe we have 16,000 people thrice, and we had to arrange stadiums for them. And they all got realization. And 40 doctors, no, I'm sorry, 400 doctors are practicing Sahaja Yoga there, out of which 40 are in Moscow itself. And there are 200 scientists who are practicing surgery. The Ministry of Education has written a beautiful letter to me, and Ministry of Agriculture wants us to show the experiments with surgery. I thought they are so open-minded also, they are not conditioned at all by anything. They are such simple people and such clean people. Their administration might have been bad, their government might have been bad, whatever it is. But I think they had a lot of time and they could think about all those things which are inside us. Or perhaps, like in India, we have very good climate all the time, so people didn't have to fight the nature so much. So they went to the jungles and forest and meditated and tried to find out what is the way out, out of this human bondage. This is very much seen there in Russia, where there is no talk of God, no talk of religion, no talk of spirit. But to me they did not challenge it. And the best part of it, the way the love is expressed in Sahaja Yoga was best seen when about twenty German Sahaja Yogis rushed to Russia to give them Realization. And they were so gentle. So kind, you can't believe they come from the same guest of a lot. Nothing. Extremely gentle. So soft spoken. They gave them realization, they worked there, they stayed there, they worked very hard. And they told me that, Mother, it was very necessary for us to come here for what our forefathers have done. Such love. Such understanding. I have never seen anybody going into discussions, arguments, even if there are five thousand together. I have never seen them discuss, discussing something. Like in India, we have a seminar where there are people, this time we are from fifty five countries. Of course, we have centers in forty five, but there were people from all Eastern Bloc and everywhere. And such understanding and love and pure love. There's no problem of this woman running with that man, nothing of the kind. They are so innocent and so pure. I never had such problems in Sahaja Yoga. If somebody carried on with this thing, he just goes out of Sahaja Yoga very easily, no problems. So, I would say that this new race of people sort of are created, they respect every religion. You'll be surprised, we have got Jews, many Jews in Sahaja Yoga. Even in Israel, we have a center. They all respect Christ, as even Christians would not respect. We have Muslims, we have some Muslims here also. They all respect Sri Krishna as much as they would respect Muhammad Sahib. And there are many Hindus here who got angry with Sal Salma Raj, uh, this fellow who uh, published things against Muhammad Sahib. Salma Rashti, so angry with him, they couldn't bear it, because we all know he was one of the incarnations of the primordial master. He has said that at the time of resurrection, your hands will speak, and this is exactly what is happening in Sahaja. The another thing that happens to you, apart from that you know the absolute knowledge and absolute love within yourself, Still, there's one more thing happens to you, that you don't feel you are doing anything, you just feel it's done. You talk in third person, it's done, it's going. It's in a third person you start talking. People ask me, how is it I travel every third day at this age of mine? I don't feel tired because I don't travel, I don't know, I'm just sitting there, I just never feel that way, I never think about it. Because you reach a stage, in the beginning only, which we call as thoughtless awareness, nirvichar samadhi. 
where you become thoughtless, means there is no future, there is no past, but you stand in the present. And in that state you start growing. When you are thoughtless, you just feel the abstract joy of everything. You do not think about it, don't waste energies on thinking, but you get inspirations of very highest quality. You get so dynamic, it's all right, very dynamic with your creativity. There are now musicians who have come here uh, to Australia uh, just to express their feeling of gratitude because they got their realization and they became very great musicians. There are many great musicians today in India. One of them had been here, Jalota, who got his realization now. He's a very great musician, very well known. Amzad Ali, so many of them are there. They may be Muslims, Hindus, anything. They all get the blessings of their own self and they become great musicians. Then we have students who were very dull students, they were brought to us, now they are earning all the scholarships, bagging all of them. And some students have, who got realization, have got through very difficult examinations in India in record time. Because when the Kundalini comes into your head, you start using much more part of your brain than you normally use and you really become extremely intelligent. But this intelligence has a capacity to cheat itself, it does not. It doesn't like to cheat, it becomes a righteous intelligence. It becomes an intelligence which tells you what is benevolent for you and benevolent for others. So the Sahaja Yoga is now the stage where human beings have to reach. This transformation is going to solve the problems, because if you see, basically, all our problems come because of human beings. But if you are transformed, <coughs> all your problems will be solved. Ecological problem comes because we have no balance. With this, you develop a balance. Because of balance, you know how far to go with any production, with any consumption, and the whole economic laws settle down into a beautiful balance. All problems that you face today are only because of the ego of human beings or their conditionings. If you can get rid of it, then you become a pure personality, you become part and parcel of the whole and you become a global, global personality and that's how you can solve global problems. See, in this time I would like, because you are academics uh, here, academicians, you to ask me some questions would be a good idea. I, I think in this little time I cannot elaborately tell you all about it, but I've got, I think, 3,000 or 4,000 tapes of mine only in English language, which you can see later on and find out about it. But just now, I think I have told you whatever was possible in this short time. I would like you to ask me some questions which are relevant with it, because I'm not a politician, I'm not a politician, I am not here to take any money from you, nothing of the kind. I am just telling you the key. Whatever was not so far told in the scriptures, I am going to tell you. And this will prove that all these scriptures are correct, all these incarnations were correct, and also prove that there is God Almighty who is looking after us. Can you say that this um, <coughs> moment of light you are cut yourself up from your future and, and your past? and to attain this fundamental status. Um, don't you render yourself nothing at this stage? Like if, if, if what are we but, but a construction from our past and a hope for the future? Don't you render yourself into a being of nothing? Oh dear. He says, if at this moment of realisation we cut ourselves off from the past and the future, aren't we then nothing? <laughs> That's what you think. Actually, you do not, you cannot cut off. Try, you cannot, can you? So it's not you can, no. What happens actually, when this happening takes place, then you rise. Like I would say like this, your attention starts rising like this and it pulls out, your attention is pulled out from the sides and you go in the center. Now, if you know past doesn't exist, and it was finished now, and future also doesn't exist. 
what exists in the present and we always miss the present, which oh, is existing. Are. Sure, at the moment the present exists. Every but, moment, but every moment, every moment. Now see, now I've seen you today, but all right. Still, now listen still, to me, as, then listen to me, listen to me. As human beings only, I'm a human being too. I, I'm, just listen to me, one minute, one minute, one minute. You see, if I'm looking at you, all right, now. Now I've seen you once, once I've seen you, at this moment. Listen, I've seen you. Any time, this moment, I can again picturize completely how you were sitting, what dress you're wearing, it's like a picture, when you know how to live in the present. Means you take a photograph. Can you take a photograph of the past or the future? You cannot, of the present only. So the whole thing becomes completely known to you. Your memory becomes tremendous. You don't live in the past, you don't live. But you know, it's the whole library in your head, that anything that you have seen, anything you have known, it just recorded there. You don't forget anything. So how does that relate to the training of lightning? Then? Pardon? And what you said before, when you said that that's what did occur. You didn't hear me properly. I think you're thinking about yourself. That might be the reason. I didn't say that. I said you stand in the present. I say that, I never said cut off, I said you stand in the present. Now try to open your head a little bit and try to understand what I'm trying to say, because this is going to help you very much. Yes, it looks quite fantastic, I know. But supposing <coughs> you are in the water, deep waters, and you are seeing the waves coming on you, then you are afraid of the waves. But supposing by some chance you are taken up in a boat, then you see at that little time you see the waves all right, but you are not afraid of them. But supposing you learn how to swim, then you can jump back and can save other people. It's like that. Is your human personality expands in that man, so that you become a witness of the whole thing. And then you can solve the problem much better. We can say as a wheel is moving, but the axis of the wheel is absolutely silent. If you are in the wheel, then you are worried and upset and hurt. But if you are at the point, at the axis, then you see the wheel moving, but you are at standstill. It's a state in which you have to go. I understand at human level, as it is from life, birth to death, we do not see this way. We get hurt and people hurt you, we also hurt others without knowing that we are hurting others. But when you are at the axis, you never hurt others, no, others can hurt you because you never get the hurt. You are beyond that. No, I have to answer you now. What is it? Uh, not long ago, we had another guru, Indian person, talking to, to large audiences. Guru Mai has been here in Sydney. And I want to ask whether you are saying the same message? Or no, 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 not at all, not at all. We had five people affected by her yesterday and we had a very bad time, nothing of the kind. Firstly, there should be no chanting in Sahaja Yoga, nothing of the kind, nothing to be done like that. Because you are not yet connected, why are you chanting? If your telephone is not connected, how can you chant? So first connection is to be established. It's all wrong, it's all money-making proposition. You cannot make money. This is one thing you please understand, all of you. If you are going to run after people who are making money, you are in for trouble, no doubt. Yesterday we had five people who were affected by this lady. She has taken from them a lot of money. 
Last year, this time she said it was bargain for others. Imagine. It's a shopping going on. How can you pay for the living thing? I mean, how much do you pay to the Mother Earth? Yes, just a minute. Yes. Is it possible if you attain communal consciousness, how can you still have a personality of your own? Oh, you have a larger personality, that's all. See now, a man who is living in his hut all the time, he is even afraid of seeing another person, then he comes out of that in the village, then he changes his personality, then a person who travels a lot, his personality is changed, your personality expands when you become a universal being, you expand. Now, what is it? Can you tell me how you, as a person, rather... I knew you were going to ask this question only. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not going to tell anything about myself. The reason is this, Christ said that he was the Son of God, which He was, no doubt. He was the Son of God, you can prove it. But when He said that, they crucified Him. People are so stupid, they cannot bear any truth, you see. What was the need to crucify Him? If He said He was the Son of God, what, what mistake did He commit? But for that He was crucified. So, when you are dealing with stupid people, you have to be careful. That's what I've learned to lesson, you see, people are very stupid, they cannot stand the truth and that's why it's not proper to tell anything about yourself, to claim anything, just to keep quiet. Even you get your Realization, you will know. It's written down through Realization, only you can understand the Spirit, there's no other way out. Because like you have to have a microscope to see through for the cells, in the same way, you have to have your Realization, otherwise you cannot understand. Anybody who comes in, wears a, a saffron dress, people start prostrating before that person, without understanding whether it is real or not. So first, uh, my request is you get your Realization. If you get your Realization, which is also not a guarantee, if you get your Realization, then you can start understanding who am I. I'm not going to claim anything whatsoever. I've become very clever and I have to do my work. I don't want to get crucified. Determine our own destiny, or does God determine our destiny? What is the importance of faith? Yes. We determine our destiny. Or does God determine? Our yeah. What is God? This is also the, in the same question. Now, the faith is that it could be blind faith, it could be intuitive faith, and it could be a real faith. Faith can be. Huh? Fight. Fight. What? Fight. He said fight. Oh, he said fight. Yeah, fight. Fight, fight. 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 Destiny. Destiny. Ah, fight. Sorry. Different to fight. I, heard it fight. <laughs> I didn't tell her. What did you say? He said fight. I'm sorry, Shivala. He said fate, not faith. Fate. Fate. F A T. Fate. Fate. Ah, that's what I was wondering. How does it go with uh, with faith and destiny? All these questions together. All right. Now, our destiny is only one, and that is that we become the Spirit. That's our destiny, for which you don't have to fight, don't have to do anything. After you become a realized soul, you enter into the Kingdom of God, and then you will realize that you are the most fortunate person. I'm sorry, I. I, that's what I was wondering, how can faith and destiny 
are two things you are talking about. Yes? I would like to hear about faith. Huh? I would like to hear about faith. Faith? Yeah. Faith also. So the faith, you see, some people have just blind faith into faith. And some people have a faith, as I told you, of another kind which is intuitive. Some people are very intuitive and their faith is absolutely all right. And some people have a faith which I realize souls have a real faith in the real thing because they see clearly. The blind faith could be uh, coming from some conditions. Like I am born in a particular religion, so I must have faith in that religion. I might have been born in some other religion in last life, but because I am born in one religion, I think this is my faith, this is my religion. That's one. But every human being should use logic and see that, all right, my faith in this religion is all right. But are the people who are following this religion, are they practicing it or not? Am I able to practice it or not? That's why I said introspection is very important. If you introspect, then you can find out that your faith is not justifiable. Because you are having faith in people. Say, if I have faith in a temple, I go and see in the temple that the priest is not a man of honesty or he is a money maker or he has all other problems, then I should not go to such a temple where such a priest is sitting, isn't it? This is what happened to Martin Luther, it's happened to Muhammad Saab, to so many people, that they challenged all these wrong things that were going on. Even Christ, he challenged, see? So this is one thing one has to see through introspection, that whatever faith I am following, I am just doing it because my father has told you or my mother has told me, or am I just following it with proper understanding and logic behind it? But the intuitive is, some people are born intuitively, I think they are born realized perhaps, that they just shun this thing. I would say one of the examples is Khalil Gibran. Khalil Gibran, if you read him, he is absolute, you can make out he is a realized soul. Then G, uh, C.S. Lewis as another one. Then we have William Blake, so many people, Mozart, so many of them were born realized. Intuitively they knew, even Einstein, Newton, intuitively they knew what was right. In their lifestyle, Abraham Lincoln, Gorbachev is another one. So these people are intuitively having a faith, though uh, because they do not know that they are born realized people. But intuitively they good and they good they always do good to others. They always look for good. They are very righteous in their own character, in their behavior, and you cannot find faults with them. Or we can say saints, you see. We are, we, in India such people are called as saints, whether they are householders or not, they are called as saints. And uh, such saints we have had, luckily in our country, quite a lot of people. They have no respect for people who just have some position or power, like we had one in Nizamuddin, in Bihar one great saint called Hazrat Nizamuddin in Delhi and a horrible king, uh, Muslim king was ruling and he was a very uh, cruel person. He asked this Nizamuddin that you come and salute to me. He said, I will not, I will not salute you. You are not the one whom I regard as something higher than me, I will not salute you. And he was very angry and then he told him that if you do not come and salute to me and by such and such date, I will cut your neck and you will be amazed. One day before that, the neck of this king was cut by someone. It's very surprising, this, uh, this is a true story I'm telling you. Like, you see, many of the saints have suffered because they wouldn't give up. They wouldn't give up their truth. So these are, I would call intuitive, but they are born realized people of past lives, great people these days. There are many children who are born like that and they are of that quality. And you can see them in a group like this, you see these people are sitting, the way they ask questions, the way no, they, you can see their alertness about it. They never ask stupid questions, never, they are so much there that you understand how uh, they are just in tune with the reality. So there are people like that, then there are people who get realization. 
Once they get realization, then they start feeling these vibrations and all that, and on that they judge the truth. You get ten children, tie their eyes up and ask them to ask the questions. Like, ask them, uh, what's wrong with this gentleman who's sitting before you? Now they can't see the man, but they immediately tell you, they'll raise one eye, finger. This finger means something wrong with the throat. You ask the gentleman, is something wrong with your throat? He said, yes. But how do you know? I said, the children are telling me. When? They showed me the finger. So it is a knowledge, just like I would say you become a divine uh, computer, you become a divine person. So these possibilities are within you. But there are other categories, the fourth category, which Blake has described very well, the men of God will seek God and they will be able, they will get to their point and they will be able to make others godly. He has said it, but that category as real seekers and these seekers today are getting their Realization very fast with, with very great, uh, I would say, understanding, very great understanding. And they are, they are, they are enjoying themselves. You must see them and you will be happy to meet them and they have become so knowledgeable. It's a very subtle knowledge. This Brahma Vidya is a subtle knowledge. They have become experts in it, just experts. They are giving realizations, they are curing people, and they are such lovable, good people. Yes? Uh, why are we uh, in ignorance? Why are we not realized? You see, you have to pass through this journey. First, you have to become human beings, and then you are given the chance to choose between hell and heaven. You have been given this chance to be in the heaven or in the hell. And those who want to be in the heaven can go to heaven or can go to hell, because this freedom had to be given. For example, when you are in school you are told two plus two, but in the college you are given chance to research out yourself. In the same way, you have to research out yourself. Full freedom is given to you research it out, and once you have researched it out, it becomes uh, easier for you to get your Realization and to bear your freedom later on, which is a complete freedom from everything. All right. yeah, um, your now please put down your hand. I am not going to answer your name, there is no sense in your questions. Please put down your hand and don't raise it anymore, please. Now. He's, a, he's using a tape recorder or something, yeah? I don't know. Ah, now, please ask. Um, you say we are our own masters um, and we control whether or not our, our chakras become balanced or imbalanced. Um, how does the role of other people healing those chakras or sensing on those chakras? What is it? Um, actually, so if we become our own masters. I think I've got your question. If we become our own masters and are capable of controlling ourselves, how do other people, you, you mentioned that you, we can heal others, how do other people affect us? You see, that's what you have to know and that all knowledge is free to you, all right? How to heal them is you have to just come to see and how we can give protection to them, how to heal them is a little more knowledge you have to know for which if you come to our centres, you can always know it. What is it? <laughs> English. Yes. Our centers, yeah. not those centers. <laughs> <laughs> the <magic. laughs> Yes. Yes. You remind me of a very nice Sahaja Yogi we have uh, in Greece, you see. So I was just wondering how is he here, but it's not the same. <laughs> but he also, poor thing, you see, he's so separated because now they have sent him to. Cyprus, and he's writing to me, Mother, please come here, so I have more Sahaja Yogis, I'm all alone. So just wondering, he has come or what? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Is there such a thing as a, uh, a national karma? And um, how that National karma? National, uh-huh. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> how does that relate to um, individual enlightenment? Yeah, I agree with you. For example, you know, the Germans or the 
Yes, but you are saying, I said the same thing, that all problems come from human beings, whether it is collective or individual, isn't it? It's true. But this thing, what happens is this, the, you see the yellow thing that is up there is the ego, that balloon that you see on the right side is the ego. And this ego is the one which, uh, which carries all our karmas. And the another side are the conditionings, that is the superego. So, when the Kundalini passes through, as you have seen, she pushes them down. When this center opens out, the one that is at the cross point, when that one opens out, then both these institutions are sucked in, and that's how it works. I think he was also asking, Shimada, is there such a thing as a national karma? Is there a karma of Australia? Or of India? course, there must be. You see, we have collective karmas also, no doubt. You see, there are so many things we have done in the past which are inhuman, even on national level, I agree with you. Every country has done it. And unless until they realize that it was wrong and they really openly say that, it is not easy to neutralize it, but they can ask for forgiveness because this divine power is the ocean of forgiveness and it can be easily forgiven, but they have to accept it. But in their ego they'll never say that they have done this mistake or that mistake. Like the uh, Germans, you see, they came and they said, what mistakes our forefathers have committed. So one has to be very gentle about it. Is it possible? Is it possible to receive divinity without asking for it under the circumstances of unbearable pain? Yeah, of course. See, the divinity is there all the time, and only you can bear that pain when you have felt your divinity. Like Christ, you see, when he was crucified, at that time he has asked for forgiveness for those who have crucified. That's an example. If you are happy and content just in a general way, how does that difference being enlightened? If you are happy and content in a general way, how does that differ from being enlightened? How does that differ from? Being enlightened? Because you are not a universal being as yet. You are just satisfied with something uh, superficial, not with something deep. And once something will come before you of that kind, you'll be shocked, you won't be able to bear it. It's like that, supposing you have a house made of uh, thin, thin uh, paper, and you are quite satisfied sitting under the thin paper thinking, oh, I'm all right, it's looking after me. But when it will rain, then what will you do? So you have to develop yourself into a personality that nothing can disturb you. Moreover, what is the use of self-contented life which is self-opinionated and self-centered? You'll never be happy. See, even uh, Roosevelt said that poverty anywhere is threat to uh, prosperity everywhere. So anywhere you feel, you know, anybody like Buddha was such a uh, great king's son, everything, and he saw a person suffering uh, as a sick man and somebody dying, and uh, all his comfort and all his uh, complacency just disappeared. And then he started thinking, what's this? Where am I? You see? So that satisfaction is not going to be uh, of eternal nature but of a very temporary nature. Can anger ever be divine? What is it? What did you say? Can anger ever be divine? Divine. 
divine. Can anger ever be divine? Divine. Yes, there is divine anger, very much. See, you must have heard about the God who is very wrathful, there's no doubt. But I'm quite frightened of that because I don't want anybody to be hurt. But sometimes people do such horrible things that I get worried that I don't know what's going to happen to this person. same thing as self-realization or getting the Holy Spirit and does this come from uh, letting oneself go in meditation? Self? Self-realization. Is, is this the same as enlightenment? Of is course, it's the same. Enlightenment is the beginning of your nirvana, I'll say, is what Buddha, Buddha means to know. know, is to know on your central nervous system, Buddha is to know, uh, the gna, gna, again agnostics is the same. Then we have also another word, Veda, from the word Veda. Veda means also to know on your central nervous system, not uh, mental. So it's the same, it's the same thing as enlightenment. And does it come through meditation or just meditation? Does it come through meditation? No. Meditation is actually before realization is introspection. Meditation is simple introspection because your mind is all the time working, it's not stops. So that time when you meditate before realization you should introspect. <laughs> and after realization you are in meditation. You don't do it, you are in meditation, that you enter into the area of present. So you are in meditation. So to do meditation is out of question. It's better is meditation is introspection and later on to be in meditation so that you grow. Can I phrase it this way? If actors allow their part to take them over, is this a dangerous thing? When they become completely the part, otherwise they become yeah. possessed. Could be, could be with some people, could be. But it's better that after realization you should take it because it won't happen to you that way. Because you are your own, you become your own. So it won't happen, but could be possible. They can just get lost into it, it's quite possible. I think you should, yes, because I think they're going to lectures. Shall I ask? Ask <laughs> you. Now, those who want to have realization should be here. Those who do not want, I cannot force on them. Yes, I, I perceive that lots of people are thinking about their classes for the afternoon, but should any people uh, like to stay here, this uh, auditorium, as I understand it, is... Uh, now you are indifferent. So, if anybody wishes to stay, they're most welcome. <laughs> They are all in a different area now. <laughs> Within these two, three days, can you imagine? Where have you reached? <laughs> this is another one. <laughs> Just you laugh all the time, isn't it? It's very interesting how you change so fast. Would you like them to come closer? It's better. Yeah. It's all right. Okay. Very basic and, uh, 
all of us. I went to a lecture a few weeks ago um, and was talking about the Master Maitreya. Oh Lord, Maitreya. Maitreya. Um, I was saying that he is now a reincarnation of the same energy um, of Buddha, of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yes, Matreya is the three mothers together, is Matreya. When you come to the center, they'll tell you what it actually means, Matreya. is the three mothers together. Oh, they are all. There's somebody calling themselves Jesus, somebody calling themselves Sri Krishna, Bhagwan. Everything is there. I mean, it's nothing new. <laughs> you see, anybody says that, you should ask them. Uh, like somebody said, I'm Christ. I said, I'll walk on the water. <laughs> then it fizzled out. <laughs> You see, it's very easy to call yourself by some name, but what they do is the point. It seems some, uh, sometimes that looking at what's happening in the world, that you know, there's hardly any hope. Do you think that enough people will become actualized in enough time for us to say anything? Now I have lots of yeah yeah I have lots of hopes absolutely I'm sure of it now it's going to work out most surprising is that the people who are at the helm of affairs are trying to come to Sahaja Yoga that's how it would work. So now, to get your Realization, uh, one thing I have to request you to take out your shoes. Takes about ten minutes only. It is a collective happening. So even if you get Realization, you must know that you must come to the collective and the collective gives you strength and you get very much corrected. And it's like this, a nail which is cut out, is not looked after by the body. In the same way, if you do not come to the collective, you won't be able to achieve any heights. So you have to be in the collective and enjoy the collective, that's very important. It's no more an individual practice, it is a collective practice and spreading of Sahaja Yoga so that you develop your depth. As a tree, when it spreads, it goes down also. So it's a very beautiful collective happening and sharing with each other. Now I would request you, to know about two conditions we have to fulfill. The first condition is that you have to know that whatever you have done in the past, maybe your mistakes or whatever it is, are dissolved by this power of forgiveness, which is all-pervading. So you should not feel guilty at all for anything. At this moment, you should not feel guilty at all. As I said, forget the past at this moment. Not to feel guilty. 
because if you feel guilty, then you develop the problem on this center on the left hand side and also you develop with that a possibility of getting spondylitis or getting what you call angina or also problems of the lethargic uh, organs within you. So it's a very dangerous thing to feel guilty. So, and the Kundalini won't rise if you have a problem uh, of your guilt. So at this moment, please forget completely that you are guilty, that you have done any mistakes, you have done anything wrong, just forget about it at this moment. You'll feel much lighter. Anybody who might have told you that you are this, you are that, forget it. Nobody has right to judge anyone. Now you have to put your left hand towards me. Now the another condition is that, another condition is that you have to forgive everyone without thinking about an individual. You might say it is very difficult to forgive, but what do you do? Logically, whether you forgive or don't forgive, you don't do anything. But if you don't forgive, then you play into wrong hands. So you forgive yourself as well as you forgive everyone. In the sense, don't even think of them, because they are torturing you through you. They are not tortured, you are torturing yourself. And it's a myth, because you're not doing anything. Just you say once for all, I forgive everyone in general. Just say it from your heart. Now there's a center, which I said is the optic chasma here, which is like this, absolutely closed, but when you forgive it opens out and then only Kundalini rises. In these few programs, everywhere in Australia I found, they do not forgive and I have to sit for hours together clearing their center. So best is that if you can really forgive from your heart, just say that I forgive everyone, just throw it away. You'll feel the load off your head, I tell you. Just the load off your head, if you can really forgive. Now, these are the two conditions, left hand towards me, right hand on your heart. In the heart resides the Spirit. Both the feet have to be away from each other because these are two powers. Here resides the Spirit. But the seat of the Spirit is here on the fontanel bone area. Now, put down your hand. Come here, this side is better. Hello? Come this side, everybody can see. Oh. Right hand in the upper portion of your abdomen, on the left hand side. We'll be working only on left hand side. Upper portion of your abdomen. Please put your hand upper portion of your abdomen, yeah. Please put the left hand like this, yeah. Now, then you have to put your left hand into the lower portion of your abdomen. The upper portion of your abdomen is a very important center of your mastery and the lower portion of your abdomen is another very important center of pure knowledge. I'm just now showing you, then we'll close our eyes and work it out. Now raise your right hand again onto the upper portion of your abdomen on the left hand side. Now raise it higher on to your heart. Now then raise it in the corner of your neck and your shoulder, which is, I told you, is the center when it is spoiled, you get, due to guilt, you get all kinds of diseases. Now turn your head, you have to write, fully. Now, put your right hand on your forehead across. Put down your head as far as possible. 
here you have to forgive everyone in general. Take back your right hand now on the back side of your head. Push back your head fully, as far as possible. Here, without counting your mistakes, without feeling guilty, you have to ask forgiveness from the all-pervading power. Now, you have to stretch your hand, palm fully. Put the center of your palm on top of your fontanelle bone area, which was a soft bone in your childhood. Now, put down your head. And press it hard. Push back your fingers so you can press it very hard. Now move your scalp slowly, seven times clockwise. That's all we have to do. Now, again remember to put your feet on the ground straight, both of them apart from each other. Put the left hand towards me, sit straight, not with any strain, but straight. Now, not like this, bent or forward, bent, but sit straight. Please now, close your eyes, you can take out your spectacles because you are not to open your eyes till I tell you. Now, take your right hand on your heart. Now, here you have to ask a very fundamental question to me, you may call me Mother or Shri Mataji. Mother, am I the Spirit? Ask this question three times. Mother, am I the Spirit? Ask this question three times. If you are the Spirit, you become your own master. So now take down your hand, right hand, the upper portion of your abdomen on the left hand side and press it hard. And here ask another fundamental question three times in your heart, Mother, am I my own master? Again ask this question, Mother, Am I my own master? Three times. I've already told you that I respect your freedom and that I cannot force pure knowledge on you. This pure knowledge manifests on your central nervous system and gives you all the powers of a realized soul. So, you have to ask for this pure knowledge. Now, take your right hand in the upper, lower portion of your abdomen on the left hand side and press it hard. Here you have to say, with humility of course, Mother, please give me pure knowledge. 
say it six times because this center has got six petals, six petals. So please say it six times. Mother, please give me pure knowledge. As soon as you ask for pure knowledge, the Kundalini starts rising. So you have to expand your upper centers with your full self-confidence. So now raise your right hand in the upper portion of your abdomen on the left hand side. And here you have to say, with full confidence ten times, Mother, I am my own master. Please say ten times, Mother, I am my own master. I have already told you that you are not this body, you are not this mind, you are not this ego, you are not these conditionings, but you are the pure Spirit. So now raise your right hand onto your heart and again with full confidence in yourself, please say twelve times Mother, I am the pure spirit. Please say it twelve times. Mother, I am the pure spirit. This Divine Power is the ocean of knowledge, is the ocean of compassion, love and bliss. But above all, it is the ocean of forgiveness. And you cannot commit any mistake which cannot be dissolved by the power of this ocean of forgiveness. So please now raise your right hand in the corner of your neck and your shoulder and turn your head to your right. Here you have to say sixteen times with full self-confidence sixteen times, Mother, I am not guilty at all. Please say it sixteen times. Unless until you say this from your heart sixteen times, the center won't open. Also, I've told you that whether you forgive or don't forgive, you do not do anything. It's a myth. But if you do not forgive, then you play into wrong hands and you torture yourself while those who have tortured you or troubled you are not at all in any way troubled. So please get rid of this myth. Now raise your right hand onto your forehead across and put down your head as far as possible, resting on the hand. This is a very important thing to do. So please, Say, Mother, I forgive everyone in general. Just say it from your heart, not how many times, but from your heart. Say it, Mother, I forgive everyone in general.
Now take back your hand on the back side of your head and push back your head as far as possible. Here without feeling guilty, without counting mistakes, just for your satisfaction you have to say, O oh, Divine Power, if I have done anything wrong knowingly or unknowingly, please forgive me. O oh, Divine Power, if I have done anything wrong knowingly or unknowingly, please forgive me. Push back your head as far as possible. Now, stretch your palm fully, push back your fingers, put your center of your palm on top of your head, where it is a soft bone called as fontanelle bone area. Put the center there, push back your fingers. Now put down your head, put a good pressure. Here again I cannot. Cross over your freedom, which I respect very much. So you have to ask for your Self-realization. I cannot force it on you. So please put down your head, give a good pressure on the scalp, move your scalp seven times clockwise, saying seven times, Mother, please give me my Self-realization. Now please take down your hands, open your eyes, put both your hands towards Me, watch Me without thinking. Now put your right hand towards Me and bend your head and see for yourself if there's a cool breeze or a hot breeze coming out of your fontanelle bone area. Please. Put it here. Now, don't put your hand on your head, away from it. Little, for some people get it further away, but you should not put it on top, uh, touching the head, little away. Now. Please take your left hand like this and again put down your head and see with your right hand. Bend your head and please see with your right hand if there's a cool or a hot breeze coming. If you have not forgiven, it will be hot breeze. So even now you can forgive everyone in general. You can move your hand little higher or on the sides to see. Now don't doubt. Now please put your right hand towards Me. 
and again put down your left hand and see for yourself if there's a cool breeze coming out of your head. Now, we have to put both our hands towards the sky like this and ask a question. Any one of these questions three times, push back your head. Ask a question three times. Mother, is this the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost? Or, Mother, is this the power of divine love? Or, Mother, is this the Paramachaitanya? Just ask this question, any one of them, three times. Push back your head. Now, please bring back your head. Very relaxing. Now, all those who have felt cool breeze out of their fontanel bone area or hot breeze or on their ha hands or on their fingertips. Please raise your both the hands. Please raise both your hands. Like this. So, all of you have felt it. I bow to you all. So as I told you, it's a collective happening to grow. Please do not neglect your Self-realization, it's very important. Respect it and please come to our centres. We have centres in Sydney all over and grow. Become your own gurus and great masters. Next year I'll be here again to see you all in a very great state of Sahaja Yogis. May God bless. So, beautiful. If there's anybody who didn't feel it, and I would like to try, there may be a blockage in your system, there are some Sahaja Yogis over there to the help. Would come this side. Just over on the side. Here. Very good, excellent. You see, I'm so very happy. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Yes, thank you. Extremely. I'm very happy. Those who want, those who feel they had some blockade or something, could come here or could come to our center. You don't have to pay for anything. Thank you.